Welcome to Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a 2020 American science fiction drama film called Proximity. Before we start, be aware, there are spoilers. The movie begins with a scene in the forest of Wrangell, Alaska back in 1979. After finishing a job, two lumberjacks are giving off signals to their base as they are about to go home. On the way, one of the trucks is suddenly lifted and smashed onto the ground by a flying saucer. The base loses connection with both trucks after this. One of the lumberjacks who survives becomes terrified and runs into the woods to escape, but soon gets abducted by an alien. Fast forward to the present day. We are introduced to Isaac Cypress, a very passionate computer engineer working for NASA in California. When Isaac arrives at the workplace, his colleague Beck informs him that they keep getting a signal from Canada, even though there is no grounded satellite there. That evening, while he is locking himself in his office working, he receives a signal from an unknown origin and thinks it is just a glitch. The next day, Isaac arrives at his psychotherapist and then receives advice to do video diaries as a method to self-healing and clear his mind. As he starts doing video diaries, he seems to see the existence of some different dimensions. The following morning, a burning meteor entering the Earth's atmosphere quickly draws attention from everyone in the area. While hiking in the mountains with his camera, Isaac also witnesses the incident and decides to videotape it. Isaac quickly hides himself and runs into the woods to record the spacecraft. In the blink of an eye, the saucer disappears and an alien from nowhere starts to show up behind him. He turns his back on the alien while the camera is still on. To his surprise, the alien does no harm to him, but walks away. Still, Isaac gets scared and runs for life. The next day, the media is flooded with news about the meteor. While Isaac and his colleague are supposed to collect the samples from the meteorite, he is nowhere to be seen. Three days later, Isaac wakes up and finds himself on a cliff near the water. While confused, Isaac checks the camera and learns that he has been abducted by the aliens. He begins to feel pain on his right arm. Finding his way back home, Isaac discovers that he has a strange power. When he looks straight into something, it disappears. And if he continues to focus on the object, it will come back. At the hospital, he is diagnosed with dehydration and is suggested to take a rest. The doctor finds a perfectly thin fracture on his arm, but it is precisely cut all the way through with no sign of scar tissue. When Isaac comes to the office, he decides to show Beck his superpower. He displays it with a cup. Strangely, it doesn't work for Beck's vision as he still sees the cup. Confused, Isaac decides to show Beck the alien footage he recorded when he was hiking. Isaac posts the footage online and it goes viral on the internet along with controversy. Early morning the next day, he receives a call from KFLA, a TV channel who wants to interview him. However, it doesn't live up to his expectations since the host only shows suspicions and questions his credibility, leaving him embarrassed and angered. Later on, Isaac's interview with KFLA becomes phenomenal in the media, but most people think the footage is fake and Isaac is just an attention seeker. A random guy even shows up on TV and claims himself for helping Isaac fake the video. In short, nobody believes in his story. Isaac is determined to reach out to someone who encountered aliens just like him. Finally, he finds Sarah, who was also abducted by the aliens beforehand. They decide to meet up in a local restaurant. The next day, while waiting for Sarah, Isaac starts seeing objects around him slowly floating in the air. Sarah shows up and Isaac starts questioning her about the alien encounter and the cut on the arm. But Sarah seems confused about it. Isaac shows her the footage in his camera and multiple pieces of evidence that aliens really exist. At this point, Sarah also lets him know about the alien abduction in 1979 that happened in Alaska with a guy named Carl. The strange thing is, he went missing after revealing his story. Several days later, to prove the alien abductions event, Isaac is required to have a lie detector test in which he has to answer a bunch of questions. It turns out that he passes the test and is immediately being chased off by men in black from a secret organization. He manages to escape, but finally gets shot at and is apprehended. After gaining consciousness, Isaac finds himself being carried to a room and tied to a chair by androids. Sarah also gets caught and is held captive in another room. Here, we are introduced to our villain, Agent William Graves. Graves believes Isaac has some valuable information that can help mankind. He then starts to conduct some tests, requiring Isaac to focus on the objects in the other room in front of him. No matter how frightened Isaac is, they keep doing tests on him and asking him about Carl, who he has no idea about. After learning that Isaac has no contact with Carl, 
Graves seems to lose his patience and starts mentioning about British Columbia, where the mysterious guy is suspected to be. A few moments later, Isaac manages to get off the chair and escape the room by attacking the two androids. He runs to Sarah's room and uses his ability to rescue her. They flee the place with the androids in pursuit. On the way, he uses his ability again to open the emergency door and escape. Isaac realizes that they are currently in Costa Rica. In the meantime, Agent Graves orders his androids to go search for the duo and suspects that they are on the way to British Columbia, reaching for Carl. Back to Isaac and Sarah. After getting away from the jungle, they decide to look for Carl. Though the duo have no clue about him, he is the only hope they have at the moment. However, there is no way to search for Carl's information in the middle of nowhere, in Costa Rica especially. Soon enough, they seek help from a local girl who suggests they go find a hacker named Zed. As they reach Zed's cabin deep down in the jungle, the friends learn that those who are after them are from ISRP, the International Space Research Program, run by the United Nations Agency. Zed agrees to help the duo looking for Carl's information as he has an untraceable connection established in his place. At Zed's pretty house tree, Sarah begins to tell Isaac about her alien abduction experience. Both open up and share a lot in common when everyone thinks they cook up their own stories. Meanwhile, Zed is looking for information about Carl, but there is nothing about his location. Isaac knows Carl is somewhere near British Columbia, as he heard Graves mention it before. He suddenly remembers about the unknown signal that he and Beck kept getting from Canada. They coordinate the signal with the GPS, and finally they are able to locate Carl. It turns out that Carl is actually in a remote place near British Columbia. They then attempt to set up a video chat with him. Carl is receiving a call from Zed, but immediately hangs up as Isaac starts to speak. Isaac tries to reconnect with him, and this time he successfully gets Carl's attention by telling him his abduction story. He also lets Carl know that he has received a signal from an unknown origin that he thought was an error. Carl asks Isaac to send the signal to him. After the signal is being decrypted, it is revealed that the alien will come to Carl's place five days later. Isaac figures out that he has to be there to get rid of the troubles while Sarah thinks it's too dangerous to go. Finally, Isaac persuades Sarah to get to the location as it is the only solution. Zed also decides to join the duo. The three of them manage to get on a jet heading to British Columbia while the agents are using their trackers chasing after them. The trio finally get on a train to go to Carl's place, but the androids are right after them. Zed suggests putting a mask on to trick them, but fails and they have to run away from their pursuit. In the last minute, the trio again trick the androids and finally make it to the destination. After arriving at the cabin of Carl, they are welcomed by him holding a gun. After realizing Isaac from the last call, Carl deactivates the trackers on Isaac and Sarah's arm, the ones that were left by the agents, and allows them to stay in the cabin for the next two days. Meanwhile, Graves also notices that he is losing the trackers. In the cabin, the trio learn that Carl has been establishing devices to decrypt the audio signal that is given off by the aliens into language that has been trying to communicate with them. The signal that Isaac discovered is the most precise one he has ever heard. Carl also shares his experiences about the day that he was abducted. Meanwhile, the agency also figures out the location and is about to swoop in. In the cabin, Zed is overwhelmed after learning that Carl has invented many incredible things in an attempt to communicate with the aliens. Later on, when Isaac and Sarah are outside, they admit that something has changed inside them after the abduction. When they come back to the cabin, Carl tells Isaac to be ready and to be on the same page with each other as there is no safety guarantee for anyone. At night, Sarah cannot sleep as her mind is racing, worrying about tomorrow. Filled with sympathy, Isaac eases her by saying that he is glad to know Sarah and is happy that eventually someone could understand him. The day has come. While they are in the cabin waiting for a sign, a tremor happens nearby. Isaac goes outside seeking for the saucer and finally encounters an alien. Isaac guides the alien to Carl's cabin and uses the decryption machine to talk to it. The aliens reveal that they have conquered medicine, science, technology, and the physical world. Now, they are searching for something greater beyond their understanding, the origin of the universe, the greatest conceivable existence. They also want to know who Jesus Christ is, as they believe he is the link to the origin of everything. Sarah wonders why her arm always gets hurt ever since the abduction. The alien uses a sophisticated bracelet wrapping around her arm and reveals that there is a tracking device implanted in her arm for their records. During this time, the ISRP cops are on the way to the cabin. 
While Isaac is getting his tracker removed by the aliens, he is told that it is impossible for him to look for proof in a world where seeing is believing. The aliens also add that they have come to understand believing is seeing. At this point, the ISRP cops led by Agent Graves have arrived and quickly surround the place. Graves demands Carl to get out of the cabin. He threatens to kill them all unless Carl answers about the death of his father, Ronald Graves, one of the lumberjacks working with Carl on the day he was abducted. However, Carl steps outside holding a gun and states that he doesn't know what happened to Ronald. No matter how Carl tries to explain, Graves gives orders to shoot the old man. Sarah immediately runs outside to check on Carl, but also gets shot. Inside the cabin, Isaac is still getting his tracker removed. Both Isaac and Zed are packing to run away. Before stepping into another dimension, the aliens remind Isaac to focus on believing, which unleashes his ability. Just in the nick of time, when the cops start to shoot, Isaac manages to take Sarah and Carl's bodies into another dimension and save Zed by taking him there as well. Graves enters the cabin and sees nothing as all four of them have gone. Both Sarah and Carl are healed and brought back to life by the aliens. Six months later, Sarah and Isaac fall in love with each other and move away to live a normal life in Costa Rica. Isaac still possesses his ability. Carl and Isaac team up together and start up a new agency. William Graves gets fired for going off the rails in his mission. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.